just pulling some paper. Um, I think I'm going to usually mostly just white paint as far as the acrylic. Hi, Crafty Kitty, Shauna, Nancy. All right. Trying to figure out how I can. Wish there was an easier way to change the font size. You know what I mean? Like. See less chat. Hi, I mean. All right. So I got. Um. I got my new book that I was talking about Friday. It's uh, by Lee Hammond and it's Realistic Animals. So I'll do a little flip through with that real quick. I bought it used, so I didn't pay much. Six or seven dollars probably on Amazon. And she has some other books. And I think the one that most of us are familiar with is... Um, like the people, but she has one just on cats and dogs. I may try to find that one later. Um, acrylic revolution animals. And like most books, it starts out with an introduction. Uh, this was kind of interesting. She talks about as you're starting these paintings that you're going to go through an awkward stage kind of work through the uglies kind of is what we always say oh is it buffering oh acrylic revolution's good and then she talks about acrylic paint supplies thinning the water with thinning the paint with water which I tend to thin um, a little more with gel if I know I'm going to thin to do washes. Using brushes, maintaining your brushes, paint surfaces, palettes, color theory, a basic palette and how to expand it. Fur. This is good because she's talking about some different colors and what to use for fur. So she's got browns, reds, um, blacks, and in her black, she's got some blues, um, hair color with white tones and hair color with yellow tones. So the, you know, she's talking about different animals and then talking about color schemes and mostly their complementaries that we're used to. Um, the, the ability of using monochromatic or black and white, reflective colors that white isn't white and black isn't black. Like I said, here she's using some aqua and some blue and some gray in there because um, pets that are very dark or black are actually kind of hard to get um, the details. They're hard to photograph and get the details. Hi, Kat. Hi, Beth. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Teresa. And hi, Lena, if you're lurking or anyone else lurking. She's talking about blending, using a filbert, using round brushes for lines, dry brushing or scrubbing, um, a closer look. Five elements of shadows. So there's a lot. There's shading in here. Complementary spheres. Finding spheres in your animal shapes. Finding your basic shapes in your animals. Then the first project. So you're on page 36 before she starts the first project. It's a chinchilla. And she's talking about the grid method. And almost all of these projects, she's using the grid method. 
Then she's got um, a tiger face and she's got the grid and then you end up after you erase the grid, this is your drawing. Now you can also take these images for if you're gonna do the project and just photocopy and change the size of it. Um, you can enlarge with the grid method by making the grids a different size than your photograph. So here's like your photograph and you can do an exact size or you can do an enlargement. So, it also helps with your proportions when you do the grid method. Um, I don't really know what this is supposed to be right here. It's an eye of some animal. This is a dog. This is a rabbit. This is a horse. She's keeping her line drawings very basic and filling in the details as she goes. This is an owl. Okay. So then she's got a chapter about painting their features. Owl eyes, cat eyes, lion, dog, tiger, chimpan chimpanzee. And going from with an outline to the what she calls the awkward stage. And then the finished area getting the thicker and the blending. And she's talking about some of the set of the eyes. Then she goes into mouths and noses of animals. The front, the three-quarter, and the side view. Ears. Hair and fur. And she's got a cat drawing for doing cat fur, and it's a really furry little kitten. Hi, Linda. Then it's painting cats is chapter five. And this is a different cat photo reference that she's done. It's more of a cat looking up instead of straight on. It's a three quarter head. And she's going to do it monochromatic in whites and grays. Then there's a blue-eyed little kitten. And this is a furrier kitten again. She's got a line drawing for you. And then she steps it through to the finish. Now, there's not a lot of step outs. You know, you literally have your reference photo, a line drawing, your outline, what she calls the awkward stage, and then the finish. And there, there's a whole paragraph describing it but there's not as much picture. Hi, Lori. A close-up of a cat. Then she's got a chapter on painting dogs. This one's so cute in a swing, like a baby swing. <laughs> so monochromatic. A close-up of a puppy. A basset hound. This is the same reference photo from earlier and a nice up close photo of the finish. And she's telling you what colors she used if you read the details. Then German Shepherd, and that's a three quarter view. Um, studio dog. This must be one of her dogs. Yeah, it's Kimber. It's one of her dogs and it's he's laying down. It looks like Looks like it might be a lab. It's hard to say. And he's laying down. Then it's painting horses and other barn animals. So she's got a horse that's grazing in the field, which is a real good reference because you see the body and the downwards, you know, that might be something you put in a bigger painting. And then she's got the goat, which is what I thought we could do next Friday if you want to. Colleen, Kathy, and Beth is I can do a sketch of the goat. Black, yeah, I can do a sketch of the goat and put it on Twitter like before and Beth's Facebook and Instagram. And then if people want to use that drawing, they can or they can, you know, make their own drawing from my sketch. We don't have to do it 
she's doing realistic, we can do more like a Megan Wells. Yeah, she has a goat. And that was one of the ones that somebody said they wanted to do. But we could do it not realistic, but Megan Wells style. You know what I mean? We could take the other book and pick a method that we wanted to use from her book. You know, and apply it to this animal or just make it up as we go. Not necessarily realistic colors, but you can see where like your darks and your, you know, you can see in the photograph. You know, you can see in this right here. some of the the shading and you could use any color then she has a cow laying down in the field another good one for if you're doing a larger scene and you want to put an animal in the field this is a really good reference a fox a squirrel she has a painting of a fox, but there's a, the squirrel is the, this is painting small furry friends. So she's got the squirrel. She's got the head of a rabbit. She has a woodchuck. Now we're getting into exotic animals. So she has the tiger face, an elephant, and it's kind of a three quarter view of an elephant. A lion, a turtle, a snake, an iguana. Some of these I wouldn't do. Like, I don't really care about doing an iguana. Then she's got a chapter on painting birds, a robin, a swan. Now, that's unusual. In all my bird painting books, I don't have anything on a swan. So that's kind of cool. This is another one that might be neat in a bigger scene, like on a pond, an owl, I know Dot likes owls, a parrot or cockatoo, and that's it. And like I said, she does have painting favorite animals by Claudia Nice. This is the book, I think, Painting People, that we've seen, Lee Hammond. I think there's some other books by Lee Hammond that we have seen. And then this Cats and Dog book is by someone else, too, but I can't read the... It might be multiple artists on this one. They're all North Lights. So... I'm a big proponent of you, the used books. I can get more used books from Amazon than I can buy in the new, you know, at the full price new. So I've not had any bad luck with any of the used ones that I've gotten. So I will, I tend to, you know, like I'll do a search and find three or four, but I definitely will use that one. Hi, Vicki, if I didn't already say hi, Vicki. Hi, Norma. We got rain this morning. Um, a link for the book. Let me see. Why don't I post it on Twitter? Because I can get it on here from my, I was looking for Tim Holtz. Stickers. Because I have the, the. The I have the holiday ones, but I'm thinking I might need the snarky and the big talk. Let me um, add that to my list. Why I'm got it on the search. Okay, my orders. Okay.
like I said, I'll put it on Twitter. So if anybody's, but it's hard to do it on the laptop. Sorry. To log into my, um, I don't have my account. I never go on the this laptop on anything but YouTube. Yeah, you could Google it, of course. I just put it on Twitter. I don't go on anything on this laptop, but the my YouTube account and my one email and StreamYard and the camera. I don't use this laptop for much else because I'm trying to keep it free of a lot of uh, spam type malware. All right. So this is what I ended up when I punched all my hexagons. I glued them down last week on Tuesday. And I found the little, you can't see it, but this is a little bee stamp. And I want to put little gold bees in here. And then I have a larger bee that I want to put in gold embossing right here. I cannot find my embossing ink pad. I think it got thrown away potentially. Or I don't know where it's at, but I have the stuff to, to refill it. So I'm going to put that on my little jelly plate. My little three by five plate and roll it out and use it kind of like an, an ink pad. If it will roll out. It may not work. All right, I'm going to just... If I can get that. Nope, I don't like that. I need a, I need a, I need a, I need one of those, um, I don't have a, a stamp thing. So I was, I'm always trying to use something different. I need to buy one of those blocks, a stamp block. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, that is pretty good. So let's try putting the gold emboss all the time. I have tried a ruler I had, but I, I'm not getting up. I don't get a good image. I think I just need to break down and order one. But I never, th I don't think about it. If okay, let me. My baby's going to need some more work here. Just a second. Let me get a dry brush.
Hi, Ify. I'm just trying to get around the image here. Let me. And knock some more of this off. Just a minute. I'm not looking at chat right now. Let me get rid of this on the paper. I don't think these little ones are going to look like bees either. All right, let's try embossing this and see. I mean, I don't, it may not work. Let's see what we get. Let's clean this off. I need to buy a, a new um, embossing pad. If I'm going to, but like I said, I don't. It's not what I do. Yeah, the little ones don't look like bees because it was too juicy. I think that looks more like a bee. Well, I'm going to use a big jelly plate, so I'm not going to move the camera. I'll hold it up. Because I'm fixing to use a big jelly plate. So, I like the, in theory, I like, you know, how it came out. 
I think I need, this is the thick embossing powder. I think I would prefer the, the regular embossing powder. And if I had a real embossing ink pad, I think it would have been better. But I like the, I like the style. If that makes sense. I like the hexagon and this, you know, the, the layout and that kind of thing. So I think I can do it better. Also, maybe a metallic ink pad would be better. So I'll look at, um, I did also look at some stencils that were B stencils. And the reason why I want bees is this looks like honeycomb and my name means queen bee. So I kind of have an affinity for bees. So that was my thought. All right, I'll put this up. I'm going to leave that little roller out. But I'm going to get another... Brayer out to use. Need to clean my brayers with some Murphy's. All right, so let me put my. I'm just going to use my. Uh, jelly plate that's eight by ten I am going to use a piece of the newsprint This is the newsprint that's big that I ordered. And I'm going to brayer on that and just make a brayer paper. And this will end up getting cut up too, probably. All right. Now I can look at potentially zooming that in a little bit in a minute. But I don't want to zoom it in too much because what happens is I end up getting out of frame because I need to work in one area. And when I zoom it in, a lot of times what happens is I get too far away. Let me turn this sideways too. That might help. And I just have a stack of some paper and stickers. All right, now I'll try it zooming. I just want to make sure that what I'm doing stays in the frame. Okay. That's not that's not too bad. Because when I did this and we zoomed in. A lot of them were out of the screen because I was trying to work down here where it's more natural for me to work. But when I zoom the camera in, it doesn't. I mean, unless I bring my boom out more, which I might do is bring the boom out more so that when I zoom in, I get this into the table. I haven't decided that's the problem. It's not my camera's on a um, a boom, and it can it can come farther out. But if it comes much farther out, then when I'm backed out, you don't you wouldn't see all the table. You would see if that makes sense. All right, I did order and get some of the little uh, Q-tips in different sizes. 
to use. I haven't opened them. So I was like, are you getting into makeup now? I was like, no, they're for art. So there's this blue, a pink, a green, and a purple. I don't know if these two blue are the same size, but I think they're different sizes for the tips. Like I said, I have not played with those yet. Wasn't really intending. Let me open up the tin of inks that we're going to use. Might use some of the diluted ones too, and some of the marabou's. All right, so I'm going to go with a dark, it's kind of a purple. And then a lighter periwinkle. I'm going to have to order. Well, I think I actually have more of this. Right, I'm going to move some of those. Did Janet let the inks, I know she let them dry before she put the acrylics on, right? Hi, Azure. Hi, Mindy. These are the acrylic inks. Are you talking to me, Kathy Burke? Oh, Teresa, I'm so sorry that it sounds so bad for blue right now, doesn't it? Hi, Brady Patty. They're okay, they're like a q tip, and you can paint with them. You can remove ink. See, they're a very tiny tip that's like a Q-tip. So I could, let me dip this in. Let me get it wet with some alcohol. So I could do um, dots with it. Like a lot of people do dotting with it. is what a lot of people do. You can remove ink when you're trying to paint with it. It's a little easier than you than the stylus because you um, don't have to keep dipping in the alcohol as much, if that makes sense. So they're, it, they're used. You can't find them and you just got them, Vicki. All right, let's go with lemonade in some of these other areas. I'm waiting for uh, Amazon to come out with the pinata colors in the exciter pack. Because I'm not going to order them from Joggles. I don't want to pay that shipping. So I'm waiting on the new pinata colors. I want the exciter pack. But it doesn't have the silver in it. So I don't know.
when they're coming out with that new formulation for the silver. If when they do, and I know they have, and I know it will shatter, then I'll probably buy. Um, I don't want to use that brayer. I'm going to use this one. I just want to move those a little and less dots. Okay, I'm going to put that over here. Okay, I'm happy with what I have on the jelly plate. And I'm going to use this. It's not a heat gun. It's just an air tool. And I think I'm going to use the light buttermilk to do the cleanup. I got too much paint, so I'm going to take some of that off as I roll it out. I want a thin coat for a cleanup print. And I like to put my paper on. Actually, I'm going to use some kind of khaki colored cardstock. I like to use it and get it on kind of right away. This is cut a little on the thin side, but it'll be edge to edge. And just let it sit on there. And dry, because what you're getting is that wet acrylic to meld to that other paint or ink in this case, and pick it up. What do you... Yeah, this is a khaki color. Kind of got a yellow to it. Yeah, that came out pretty. Um, this is um, the card stuff that's kind of got the linen texture. Can you see the texture in the paper? All right, let's do... There's still a little lavender on there and there there is that what that we from the linen might move around all right i'm gonna do the lettuce which is a green that over here and then let's do the pinata forest I'm gonna do it in some of the same areas it's a lot darker 
But if I get it behind that green in some places, Okay, what do we want with this green? Eileen. Should we go with some of the marabou, like caramel, vanilla, cinnamon colors? I may throw some orange in there too. Yep, some orange. Okay. Let me put some of this on there. And then I'll put some pops of the orange in there too. The pinata orange. I may use some of the diluted. I really like the vanilla. From the marabou color. Okay, then let's try. Actually, I'll go full strength orange at first. Now I'm going to take some of the orange that is. That's cranberry. Okay, this is diluted orange. And I'm just gonna put it in some of those areas just to, I don't wanna, I don't think I wanna brayer it this time. Uh, you get distracted before you look when you're looking for something like that, Vicky. Do you like to get distracted by something else you find and then you quit looking for what you were looking for? Okay, let's use the little hair dryer again.
Well, I did find that if I put the ink on them, like the alcohol ink on them longer or the extender on them longer, then I could get them to move. But I have not played. I was at school all week. Well, two, the last two days. Surgery Tuesday. Doctor's appointment Wednesday. School Thursday. And school Friday. So I have, other than Friday night when we were in here, I haven't been in my art room. So Monday was the last time I did anything with the inks. And the ironic thing yesterday, guys, is I went to active shooter training. At the police station. All right, I'm just going to use regular white paper today on this one. Just coffee paper. Yeah, this one right here, Joycey. Or the drips over here, maybe. But I have more hope for the marabou. Oh, you're going to like this one, people. It cleaned the plate really well, and we did get that texture from the other paper. There is some purple in some areas still, and you definitely see that linen-like texture. Um, let's see if we get any, let's get the foil. I'm just going to get a piece of used foil and see if it takes, because there are some tacky places. See if it takes and gets any glimmer. A little bit here and there. Not a lot, but I didn't want a lot. I mean, Just some pieces here and there. It's going to be hard to see on the screen. You can see where it took just in a few places. Almost looks like a map to me. This one. Okay. It is more vibrant on the white paper than on the color as far as the inks go. Let's go with some of the mess. Okay, this is tangerine. Very light colored. It's not. This is a garnet red. This will be the dominant. Color. Let's see. 
let's kind of let some of that Okay, and I'm going to add some more layers, just drippy layers to darken it up in some places again of that same garnet. Oh, that was Bordeaux. So that was a different red, which that's fine. Awesome. The garnet. I'm going to go with some of the lighter drips. Okay, let's put the reds and the orange up. What do we want to put with that? Let's try a metallic. Let's try a metallic. Let's try... Let's see what happens when you use the pinata brass. I'm letting it mix real well because they separate. And I'm going to let that just be drips too. I'll let that do its thing. I don't want to do red and green because I don't. Yeah, I have. Am I using a stencil? No, I'm not using stencils. I might use a stencil in a few minutes, but I'm not using a stencil right now. Um, I'm leaning towards a pale and a dark teal or brown. I know Joyce's vote, vote, vote would be brown, but I think I want to go with a kind of a light teal color. I'll let that kind of get in some of those areas. And then this is a darker so that's about as green as I'm gonna go. This is a little more bluer. those inks kind of do their thing. Let's dry that. Yeah, I thought about the Baja Blue. Yeah, it, it it might look Christmassy. We'll see. It's they're they're turquoise. So we'll see when we put I'll put white paint this time.
the gold uh, or bronze did not shatter or move. That stayed in drips. But I didn't put any alcohol on it to move it. Okay, super thin layer. I am going to go with the, this white paint is starting to beat up a little bit. It's a new bottle and it's been sitting a while. So it probably needs to be shaken a little more. Okay, the reds came out really vibrant, but they read more pink. But I like that real spotty look because I'm not going to use a whole piece of that. I'm going to use parts of it torn up. So I know it's very busy, but I might only be using a piece like this when it comes right down to it. Uh, let's see. It does have some sticky areas. I can get some more metallic on it. In random places. Okay, that got a little much more. Um, I think I like the foil so much better than the actual metallic inks, to be honest. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to go pinky. Just steal banana. I'm going to go pale pink. I use pink a lot. And then I'm going to go, I'm using some of the diluted. I'm going to go with some of the the orange diluted and some of the cranberry diluted. It's not going to show up very much on your screen right now. I don't want to do that. Here's a terracotta diluted. Okay, those are the diluted ones. So now let's go with some real deal pink. In those areas where the pink is heavier. And some real deal orange. These are pinatas. And the yellow pinata. Which is also very bright. I'm going to come back with a little bit of diluted. I want to just move some of those a little more. I like some of the bleed that's happening.
Don't forget uh, after me, Beth will have uh, bingo on at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. She's in the chat. So if you're not subscribed to her channel, uh, it's lots of fun. She does a little project at the beginning and we visit and then we start with bingo and it's a um, art bingo. You can just play bingo or you can art along. Uh, when she draws a number, there's a prompt that goes with each bingo number that kind of guides your journal play. I'll pick this up with white. I want to keep the colors bright and vibrant. So I'm going to use the white. And it was probably damp in a few areas, so that might move some of the colors a little. I don't really care. And again, that white paint is beating up a little and pulling up. The papers I'm getting kind of remind me of when I used the magicals on my plate. And I really liked those papers for collage. Oh, mama. I don't know what's right here and why it did that, but that's kind of cool. There was a crease, so I know that's why that white is there. I don't know why that stuck right here. It could be that there's something from the previous pull stuck on the plate there is a little of the bronze in there here and there yeah this one's my favorite and because it was a little wet when i moved the white paint i have some real soft pastels back here and because i put all that diluted alcohol ink down on the plate i did have a lot of really light colored these are very diluted, um, too diluted really in reality. Let's try a blue and green one and we'll start with the diluted green. That pink will still be on there, but we'll start with some of that. And I have a diluted blue. I can get to it. And where did I put Okay. Let me find, I need to find the tip. I thought they were over there, but this is the problem when you reorganize 
and you forget where you reorganized and things get moved. not find the little tips that go on this bottle. Sorry people, just a second. Let me move some of the alcohol pads. I'll use this. It'll work. Eggplant. Green. And I'll find them. But it won't be right now. They're sitting somewhere secure. All right. So this is um, a little bit stronger green. I'm just going to put it in a syringe. And this is a diluted Baja Blue. I'm also going to use some of this real pale turquoisey kind of color all over. And then we'll get some real Baja Blue. Okay, let's dry that just a little bit. I'll leave that a little wet. Some more diluted drops in some of this area. I'm going to go with the white again. My, this is on paper. This is newsprint underneath my jelly plate. So I can kind of brayer. And there's drops around the outsides of where it's fallen off, which does not matter to me. Use white paper. Get that down there relatively quick. Give that a little bit of a brayer on the back. Thank you. 
I like that this picked up some of the pinks here and there. I'm going to get the silver foil. Again, it's used foil, so it's got missing parts. Which I'm looking for randomness anyway. Didn't get a lot, but I did get a little. Yeah, I like the blue and the green. I like the soft muted background. This is Deco Arts foil. I don't have any of the original containers. Usually where you get multiple colors. Rangers also has a foil. It's not gold leaf paper. It's 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 foil. Yeah, gold leaf, you would put it on, you wouldn't rip it off. You would just put it on. There's not enough stick for this to be gold leaf. I have gold leaf, but the gold leaf's a little more delicate, and you would put it on and then, like, take a brush and get this part that didn't stick. Okay, let's go with the real pale purpley color everywhere, because that's a pale and let's go with the pale pink color. And let's do Stonehenge blue as a darker. Now this is one thing Ranger's good for, it drips. Not necessarily when you're trying to get drips. And then this is indigo, which is kind of a purplish blue that's much darker. Let's put some areas of that. So that's our blues and our purples. Okay, I am going to take some pinata pink that's diluted and add it here and there. It'll also wet and make those move. And then I'm gonna take some pink, like the full strength pinata pink. And it's kind of like more of a magenta in my opinion and add it in a few places. And then I'm gonna go cray cray and add a little of this peach Bellini in a few places. Okay, let's put those all back. Yeah, the gold leaf, you put on something sticky, but it has to be fairly sticky. There's mediums that you can use, and then you brush away the excess. This, you put on, it'll stick to the sticky, and it'll pull off, and it doesn't, you, it will be more random. Now, you can, I guess, get it more...
Right, and then I'm going to take a little bit more of this light pink in a few areas and get some more. It's right there. And I'm getting all my paper source damage. So let me take that. All right, I'm going to use white. wet still so we'll see what we get take white paper let that sit clean the brayer off really well Sorry. Sometimes it catches on the end of that brayer. About ready to move the paper and flip it and move the plate and get some more area to bray, to brayer the paint. If I put the gel... And then through the laminator, it would stick. But I'm not looking for a heavy. Okay, I'm going to take the silver. I'm just looking for little bits of glimmer, so I'm not... really going for a heavy metallic. I just like this little flex here and there of it. Very little. Now I could take the deco art foil pen and put some more purposeful and then let it you know dry and stuff but i'm just looking for paper that see like this right here if you just look at that piece right there that's just yummy and would be so pretty on a bunny, you know, with like the dark on the ear coming up to the lighter colors. Some of it sticks very, very little on this one. Very, very little. I'm just getting little bits here and there. If I want it a lot, I would have to do something more purposeful, which I could. But I'm just getting some little glimmers here and there, which are probably hard to see on the camera. This is really small amounts. It just looks like little chips of silver here and there. Okay, let's real quick. Move the paper. I'm going to flip the paper.
And let's do yellow and teal. Um, I can add some gray in there. I don't have sepia. I have some rust, but I don't really want to go that route, to be honest. But gray I could use. Gray I have no problem. This is just a couple different yellows. I wish I had the butterscotch. There is this sandal. It's a little bit. Okay, let's put a little teal action in there in areas. And I'm going to come in with a darker teal. Yeah, I don't have butterscotch. I wish I did, but I don't. It's on my list. Okay, that's kind of a green teal. And I am going to add some of the, the blue teal around it. And then we'll come in with some pitch black. Looking for the shadow gray. Here's the shadow gray. I don't want to do too much of that. Lighter. All right, let's try that real quick. The orange again. Well, I don't really want orange. I'll do the peach blini again, which is kind of an orange, but I don't want it too. I don't want too. I don't want really brownie or rust. In fact, I'm going to come back in with the lemonade stronger in some areas. Because I really want a yellow and a teal feel. All right, let's I didn't like the gray on it. I 
metallic stickles. I have some stickles, but I don't use them very often. If you're talking to me, Joycey. Shauna sent me some, but I want to collage with it, so I don't want it to be uh, too textured, if that makes sense. Because I'm going to tear it up and collage with it. It's Now we could try some magicals on the plate and then do inks over it and see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sewing anything, but you could easily do that with metallic thread. That would be pretty. I don't have a sewing machine, so. It went a little more green than I thought it would. It's pretty. Okay, that's all it's going to pick up foil-wise. Sometimes, this one they didn't smoosh that much, but I put a lot of pale ones back here that are real pale. Some of them are moving on when I grayer and some are not. I'm just varying it. Let's try a magical color that we know is good shimmer. What would look like? So let's do um that's red. I don't want red. Let's do some orange and copper brown colors. These four magicals. Let's try those. Yeah, you could. I did in the beginning move it with the brayer. Okay. That is an, like a Hogwarts orange, I believe it is. I can't read the labels now. I took my glasses off. Is a different orange. Third orange. And the copper cattail brown. 
Yeah, it was at the beginning. I smushed them a little. Like this one, I brayered. And this one, I did some brayering. We can do some brayering on this one. Okay, so those are those magicals. Which don't show up on the screen right now, I know. I'm not gonna add water. What I'm gonna do is go back to the Marabou's and those browns. Okay, and I'm going to use some of this diluted teak orange. I'm going to start with it because it's real pale and it'll start the magicals kind of moving, but it won't add a lot of color. And we'll work kind of light to dark. This is vanilla. I'm just trying to get some muted color kind of on the background. And it's vanilla. Well, maybe can brayer the darker. This one is, I think, it's caramel or cinnamon. I'll tell you in just a minute. That one was caramel. This one is cinnamon then. And this one is a dark brown. And I can try brayering that a little in areas with the little brayer. I'm just trying to skip it on there. You get less color when you do brayer it. So that was the only... Yeah, you could get a, I just like the splots and the more blended. All right, now I'm going to add an, a blue to that. I'm going to start with the diluted Baja blue in some areas. I know it looks more teal probably on the screen, but it's a, it's not. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the Marabou Aquatic Blue. It's kind of, it's a very similar color as to that. And then that darker blue, which is the one I really. Gentia or something like this. This is the one Janet will like. OK. 
Okay. And then what I've been doing, now I could take the brayer to that blue a little too and kind of spread it out. But if I do, then I want to come back with the darker blue again because I like those dark spots. All right, I'm going to take the air. Hi, Gail. Kind of move it. These dry pretty quick. Let's take white. Actually, we'll take the cream and pick it up with the cream. This time, the buttermilk. some of that extra paint. I am seeing some of the magicals come on the surface. Okay, let's take a piece of that khaki linen color. Pull this off on the back side of it so we get really good contact. This is the one that has that linen weave to the paper. I think it's basil cardstock. Okay, I got some, but some of it didn't come up. Not a lot of magical sparkle. You're not going to see it as well as I do on the paper. I'm not, I don't want to do that on the plate. Sorry, just a second. Not getting a lot of foil sticking, a little here and there. The peach is really pretty. It's not going to probably show the camera. But the peach, there's peach and blue with some brown. It actually is a very pretty piece of paper. But there's a lot right here left that we can add to. I'll use regular paper when we add because I want to get a really good contact. Let's try some. Pinata copper. In some places. And that will be very light shimmer. Let's go with a salmon pink color. And this, it's kind of it's a pale pink, but it's kind of a rosewood pink. Okay, now I'm open. Do we want a blue, an orange, a brown? Want a dark color or a magenta? Those are the four. I 
I think brown will get muddy. Burgundy. I have a burgundy. I have a cranberry. It's closest burgundy I have. And I'm not going to do a lot to swish it. I like. The organic feel. Okay. Let's give that a little dry. We'll go with the buttermilk. Should I add some magenta? This is that. Yeah, this pink is pretty, pretty hot. I'm not going to go brown. Because it's going to get too dark. All right. All right. Now that pink is kind of wet. And we're going to get the linen texture. So I'm going to use regular copy paper. See, I'm getting some of that pink on the brayer. Get the paper on there real quick. Get a really good, sorry. Get here. If I brayer these edges, I'm more likely to get that off the edges, too. Okay. Add some of that bronze. Now I'm going to get more foil to come off because that copper is sticky, icky stuff. I telling you. You do see if you look up close, you see the linen texture. So that's a pretty color combination. Again, I would not use all of it. I would just use pieces of it. Yeah, one happy bunny. It's got some sticky on the back. Um, let me. I'm just prairing it down flat because there's some sticky on the back from the plate. I'll see if I can get some of that to not be as sticky. I 
I will say that little to no magicals. Little to no magicals. So that's a waste of the magicals, in my opinion. Um, it's hard to get the magicals. I mean, you can do like the gel medium and the magicals, but I think you get more bang for your buck with the inks. Let's do... I like this blue color. We'll do a brayer one for Kathy. Okay, so let's sort of brayer some areas of that. Blue, and let's let that kind of dry. All right, Miss Berg. What should we add to that blue? Oh, she's asleep. I'll get her in a minute. I'm almost done because it's going to be close to getting time um, for Beth to stream. Orange, I like the orange idea because the how about a, um, a terracotta? Kind of a And let's briar that in some places. And then we'll try some of the lettuce green. We'll get some moose poop here and there. And we'll leave the green organic yeah it's just a waste of the magicals okay so let's take and dry that just a little bit i'm liking what we're seeing it's more blobs it's moving kathy said dry the gray I didn't like on the plate. I can do a blue and a gray next time. We'll try a gray with the blue and the purple maybe or something. Now, if we want this to be brighter, we should use white. If we want it to be muted, buttermilk i'm going white because i like them to be a little more brighter i don't really like them as muted to be I got a lot of paint in there. Just trying to get a decent thin coat. There we go. Yeah, I think it'll be more modern, Eileen, than drippy, than. Well, we'll see. Because there were some round areas. This is probably more like what Janet came up with. Bigger um, areas of color. All right, and I'm going to take the silver foil. I may not get anything. Doesn't feel like it. 
No, nah, I didn't. I didn't really get anything hardly on the foil, which is fine with me. Put orange splots on top of it. They'll just. Okay, let's take this orange. You mean little orange spots like that, Kathy? It did give it more movement, color. Well, I don't have paint out. I just have inks out. All right, so let's try. I'm not getting paint out. I, I just don't want to get paint besides pick up colors that I have out. All right, so we'll try the denim blue and we'll do a little brayer with that it's more of a gray blue and we'll just do some different layers of that And then put some drops back in of that color. All right, let's go with the shadow gray. All right, I'm going to let those drops kind of dry. I want a little bit of that other, this is the marabou. Blue. And we're going to let that kind of dry a little bit. And then we're going to put the lettuce green back. Actually, let's take some of, we'll take a little bit of the forest green and brayer it. In some areas. add some lettuce green which just is more of an olive and brayer some of that up all of that drops of some brighter blue work its way here and there all right I'm gonna go white again
regular copy paper. The reason why I like white over the buttermilk is I think the colors come out more true. This one's pretty. Let's see if any silver takes to it. Yeah. When you brayer it, you really don't get any ridges built up. There's still every once in a while a little bit of that linen texture. So I think that is it for me. It's about time to get dinner, whatever we're going to do. I don't know. The See the last pull? That's the last one. That was blues and greens and a little gray. This was a, tea, a terracotta blue and green. I'll show the cutie. Just a second, Ippy. I'll have to go wake her up probably. This was blue leftover on the plate, some burgundy, magenta, and some browns. This was blue and some peachy colors and browns. This was orange and green and yellow colors. This was purples and pinks and a little bit of coral kind of color. This was teals with greens and blues. This was yellow and orange and magenta. This was pinky burgundy reds with teals, some bronze. This was kind of an orangey rust color with some greens and a little bit of purple. And then this was purple and um, yellow teal. So that's a good add to my stash. Um, I didn't mess with stencils at all. You could use stencils. I will cut this up and use this too. This paper, this brayer paper, what I'll end up doing usually is take my scissors and cut that in some pieces that'll fit and I can store because that's a pretty, you know, I can collage on it or work with it later, add more to it. Um, and then I'll probably take this edge right here. And cut it in two pieces. And this one I'll just cut kind of down in the middle. Because it definitely can have more added to it. And then I'll I'll use those. I'll add to them. They'll get put in my stash. Usually I'll put them in the neutral drawer. 
I can add more if I'm jelly printing. All right, let me go see if we can get Tay Tay to come in here. She, you know, doesn't always cooperate. Give me just a second. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. Your public is demanding your appearance. You coming? She's coming. She was napping. You coming? Tay Tay, we're in here, not getting a can. She doesn't seem to be interested in making an appearance. Oh, I found my little uh, tips. They were underneath the shelf. That makes more sense. I didn't know where I could go under there. Damn it. Oh, no, you can call CPS. You know, she's going to call CPS, the Cat Protection Service. There's a Tay Tay. Say, I was napping and eating people. This is not my regular appearance time. You are lay down? You going to lay down? She is uh, some kind of spoiled, is what she is. She's gonna show you her dummy. You gonna show him your tummy? She's named Taylor after Taylor Guitars. Her brother is Gibson. Yeah, this is what I do when I'm cute. When I say I know I'm cute. She is a pretty color. She's kind of the color pink. Is nobody teasing you? She likes to rub her face on the box that the focus you freak sits on. She is. I don't know. Ten? She's about ten? Yeah. There were three Siamese. Her, she's not pure Siamese. There was... Um, her brother is a gray tuxedo, and her other brother, Henry, is um, black, like real fuzzy black, or was when he was a kid, and I don't know how he ended up as an adult, which is why she has, this side is gray, that's the tuxedo, like she's not, like I said, she's not pure Siamese, this little part right here is gray, this side of her face. And there's also gray. She has a gray mark right here that was more prominent earlier. That's just like her brother's white spot on the tuxedo face. 
So I don't know how the other Siamese turned out. I mean, other people took those. I don't, we don't know those people. So I'm not sure. We have made a mess in here, haven't we, Tay Tay? We have alcohol ink pads thrown all over the floor. The cart is working and not working that I put the inks on. I have more inks than I have cart room. So I think I need to break down and buy another cart, to be honest. I don't know where I'm going to put it. All right, guys. It is time for us to figure out. Yeah, I've done a picture of her before. Um, Shauna has a a bag that I did with her and I've done um, a watercolor color pencil of her and I've done another color pencil of her. Bye bye. I'll see I'll see y'all later. Um, I'll probably pop into Beth for a little while. Talk to y'all later. Thanks, guys, for hanging out.